So eight marks of the Antichrist. Who will this person be when they step onto the stage of human history? How will we as God's children know that it is the Antichrist, not the real Christ? Number one, he is the man of lawlessness and the son of destruction. This means that we're dealing with a human being. This is not an extraterrestrial being or artificial intelligence. He is a son and a man. So it is a human being. Second Thessalonians 2, also in the King James and the New King James says this, it says that he is quote, the son of perdition. The same thing is said in John 17 about another guy named Judas Iscariot. He's the son of perdition. What he is, he's the, He's the worst Judas. He's worse than Judas. Both are demonic and evil and antichrist, but the antichrist comes in an effort to finish what Judas started. Um, you need to know this as well. Jesus lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. The antichrist lives by the power of Satan. It says that he is the son of perdition. And it says that Judas was the son of perdition. And it says that Judas was filled by Satan. He is the counterfeit of Christ. Number two, the Antichrist, he quote, opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship. He wants to remove all other religions and all other worship. And he alone wants to be worshiped as God. He wants to globally rule the earth. He doesn't want Christ to return and be worshiped. He wants Christ not to return and instead he wants to be worshiped. Let, let me, rabbit trail. Um, so eschatology, uh, so eschatology, eschatos is the end or last things and then ology is study. So eschatology is this category, the study of the end or the last things or the end times. Christians have an eschatology. Jesus is coming, the dead will rise, heaven and hell will be occupied forever and ever. That's our eschatology. Muslims also have an eschatology and their eschatology is the exact same as the Antichrist. The eschatology of the Muslims is this, that Islam will ultimately rule the world and that all the nations will be governed by the Quran and their demon God, Allah, and their false prophet, Muhammad. And that's why they keep entering into nations and they keep having children because they have the long view of things. The result will be that their goal is to have Islam rule the world and there only be one religion, Islam. And they believe that when that happens, their leader will arise and he will be the Prince of Peace. And that's the Antichrist. I'm not saying that the Antichrist is Muslim, but it wouldn't surprise me. Because if that eschatology happens, it perfectly paves the way for the Antichrist. Finally, a global world religion, and I am here to rule and reign as the counterfeit and Antichrist. Number three, how many of you are spooked right now? I could see it. I wish you could see your faces. I feel like I'm giving you guys a Scooby-Doo episode and you're like, zoinks. Yeah, just, here, just stick with me, okay? Number three, he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. So here's the question, which temple is it that he goes to? So there are two ways that Christians answer this. So there was the first temple that was destroyed and then it was rebuilt. And then it was destroyed again in 70 AD. Here's why we don't have a temple. We don't need it. If you follow the directions to a destination and you arrive at that destination, you no longer need the directions. The temple was a series of signs directing us to Jesus. So it was the connecting point between heaven and earth. Well, then God comes down as Jesus Christ. Now we don't need the temple because we have Jesus. In addition, in the temple was the high priest who then interceded between the sinless goodness of God and the sinful people on earth. We don't need a priest because we got Jesus, our great high priest. And the priest would offer a sacrifice for sin. 
Well, we don't need a sacrifice because Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He was sacrificed in our place for our sins. So all of the temple was a series of directions to get us to Jesus. Once Jesus comes, we don't need the directions anymore. We don't need the temple. So now if the Antichrist comes to the temple, there's only two options. Number one, this happened in the past, that whoever this person is had to come before the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Some Jesus-loving, Bible-believing Christians believe that. The other option is they're gonna rebuild the temple. They already rebuilt it once, why not twice? Now, this is gonna be a thing if it happens. This is what I believe is going to happen. I believe they're gonna try and rebuild the temple. And right now, the temple mount is controlled by the Muslims, not the Jews. I preached there. And and ultimately to try and get the Jews and the Muslims to build something together for religion, that's gonna take a lot of demonic delusion and power. But some would postulate that they're gonna rebuild the temple and then the Jews will think, finally, we get to go back to our Old Testament system because they've missed Jesus Christ as savior. And then what will happen is the Antichrist will enter in and he will rule and reign from Jerusalem the very place that Jesus Christ is supposed to return to and rule and reign from. Number four, as we get nearer to the end regarding the antichrist and the man of lawlessness, he will no longer be held back by the quote unquote restrainer. This will shock you. History right now could be much, much worse. Because right now the restrainer is holding back the spirit of Belial and lawlessness, the spirit of Hamas and violence, the spirit of Antichrist. And there is coming a day when it says that the restraint will be lifted. Let me say this, the worst thing that could happen is if God lets you do exactly what you want to do. In Romans, it talks about the active and the passive wrath of God. The active wrath of God is where God involves himself and just stops you. The passive wrath of God is where God releases you to be evil and to do evil without stopping you. What we're seeing here with the restrainer is the passive wrath of God. All the demonic forces and evildoers in the world are just pressing and pressing and pressing. And finally, God says, as you will. Question is, what is the restrainer? My belief is the restrainer is God, the Holy Spirit working through the church. If you remove the church, you remove those of us who believe in the rule of law, the sanctity of human life, male, female, gender, children are a blessing, killing an unborn child is not the will of God. The parents have rights over government. We are the restraining force in the world. Make no mistake. If you take the church out of culture, you're going to get a decline in recognition of sanctity of human life, an increase in the killing of unborn children, mutilation of generations, absolute suicidal ideation, and self-destruction. Jesus says this word. He says that the church is like the salt of the world. You know what salt does? You put salt in meat and it slows the rot. You know what this world is? It's rotting. Do you know what happens when you remove the church, the people of God, the presence of God, the word of God? It just rots. This will be offensive, but you know. Um, If you go to Seattle, it's rotting. You go to Portland, it's rotting. You go to San Francisco, it's rotting. You go to LA, it's rotting. You go to Chicago, it's rotting. You go to New York, it's rotting. Why? The church is not there in large strength or number. There is apostasy. There are a few churches that know and love God and preach the word, but there's not enough salt to keep the meat from rotting. Howdy, Pastor Mark here. Thanks for viewing the clip. And if you'd like the entire sermon, we've got it ready to go. 